Welcome to Our City. I'm Alonzo Jones, sitting in for Mayor Chris Bowich. And here's what's going on this week around our city. On Thursday, September 24th at 11 a.m., Mayor Bowich will join Senator Raymond Lesniak, Assemblyman Joseph Krein, Assemblywoman Annette Keanu, and the Office on Aging in introducing the newly appointed New Jersey Health Commissioner, Heather Howard. The theme of this event is multicultural communities taking control of their own health. The event will be held at the O'Donnell Dempsey Center, located at 622 Salem Avenue in Elizabeth. For more information, please call 908-820-4045. On Friday, September 25th at 6 p.m., Mayor Bowles will attend the Ogrulo Hispanics Annual Awards Dinner. The event is held to honor local businesses and merchants. It will be held at the Westwood, located at 438 North Avenue in Garwood, New Jersey. If you need more information concerning this or any of the events this week, please call the Public Information Office at 908-820-4124. Chronic kidney disease is a major health problem in the U.S. and around the world. Today, the frequency of CKD continues to rise. The National Kidney Foundation estimates that 26 million Americans, or one in nine adults, have chronic kidney disease. With me today to talk about this health issue, is Dr. James McAnally, Chief of Nephrology and Medical Director of Renal Services at Trinitas Regional Medical Center. And also we have Peggy Custodi, a nurse who is a renal cl clinician at Trinitas. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. McAnally, please define what is meant by chronic kidney disease. Sure, I'd be happy to, Alonzo. Uh, several years ago, the National Kidney Foundation developed guidelines to increase the awareness of chronic kidney disease as a public health problem. And that definition, uh, from that came a definition of uh, structural or functional abnormalities of kidney function that are present for more than uh, three months or more. Now from that, there were five stages developed based on glomerular filtration rate, a fancy word for just a measure of the ability of the kidneys to filter waste. Normal GFR is approximately 100 to 120 ml per minute. Stage 1 kidney disease is defined as a GFR of greater than 90, but folks that have pro protein in their urine. Stage 2, GFR between 60 and 89. Stage 3, between 30 and 59. Stage 4, between 15 and 29. And stage 5, or end-stage renal disease, a GFR of less than 15. They're the folks that, uh, unless something dramatically happens, will require some form of renal replacement therapy, be it either, either dialysis or a transplantation. In fact, in the state of New Jersey now, it is mandated that on a routine chemistry test performed, an estimated GFR is included. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Peggy, as a clinician who works with patients at Trinitas, uh, what do you stress most in helping them deal with kidney disease? Well, what we stress the most is to slow down the progression of their kidney disease, and we do that through education. Um, we want to teach them to be compliant with their doctor's appointments, be compliant with their medications, and the biggest thing that we need them to be compliant with is their diet. The diet's really an important part when they're pre-renal, um, and that helps to slow down that progression of their kidney disease. Okay. Now, Doctor, why is CKD so widespread? Well, Alonzo, the, the two most common causes of kidney disease in the United States are diabetes mellitus and hypertension. Both of these diseases and their related menace, obesity, are increasing. So, as a result, chronic kidney disease is, is increasing. In fact, we have seen uh, young people in their 30s uh, have developed end-stage renal disease due to diabetes that years ago was called adult onset, but because of sedentary lifestyles, diet, obesity, et cetera, mm -hmm. the diabetes has affected their kidneys. In addition, uh, another reason why it's increasing is because previously, uh, early stages of chronic kidney disease probably went under-recognized. Now, I know uh, kidney disease runs rampant in my family. Um, are there racial ethnic factors that are linked to frequency of CKD? Yes, and that's, that's a very important question because um, if you look at end-stage kidney disease, mm -hmm. it affects the African-American population four times that of a white population. Mm -hmm. 
the Hispanic population, ESRD affects them twice as much as a white population, and even within the Hispanic community, studies have shown that more frequent in Cuban Americans than Mexican Americans or, or Puerto Ricans. In addition, because diabetes and hypertension, unfortunately, are also extremely frequent in those populations, that's mm -hmm. also a factor. And the last one could argue is limited access to the healthcare system in, in, in those folks. Now you scare me a little bit, Doc, but I'm going to ask this question while I have you get some free medicine. I don't mean like. to scare you. <laughs> but are certain foods that we definitely need to uh, avoid? What, what, can you tell me some of those foods you need to stay away from? I don't know necessarily foods per se, okay. but a prudent diet makes sense. I think more important is really calories mm. uh, in that because of the epidemic of obesity, which then leads to hypertension, mm -hmm. which then leads to diabetes, I think it's more the total number of calories than any particular food, assuming that your renal function is normal. Right. And I think that's the key word there with my family, obesity. We just love to eat. So. Now, what are some suggestions you offer to people to help them manage the disease? Um, well, diet is a key for any pre-renal. We um, mm -hmm. do monitor especially the protein. Um, we restrict the protein a little bit so that because the kidneys can't break the protein down. But again, the things that are really important to help them slow down that is the compliance. Compliance is really a key issue. And um, if we educate them in all the things that are important, if in the end they need to, um, which includes treatment options, if it gets to the point where, like Dr. McAnally is saying, that they're in the end stage and they need to start dialysis mm -hmm. or something, they've had been um, educated to all the options that they have, and then they can make an informed decision on their own. And also what's more important is it helps for it to be a positive experience, as positive as it possibly can be, mm -hmm. rather than a negative, and it'd be very traumatic for them, the family, because that's really important for them. Okay. Now, I know there's different foundations and everything, but uh, does Trinitas partner with the National Kidney Foundation or any other special projects? Uh, yes, we do. As a matter of fact, in 2007, we did a KEEP program. It's a kidney early evaluation program. And what that is is it's a grant from the Kidney Foundation for $5,000. We can see 100 patients. They have to register and sign up for that. They have to be at least 18 years of age. They have to have had a father, mother, grandparent, um, sister, brother um, that's had either kidney disease, hypertension, or diabetes, and they qualify to come to this program to be screened to see if they're at risk, free of charge to them. Whether they have hospitalization or not, That none of that is taken. The um, they may, they come, they have their blood work done, urine tests are done for WBCs, protein in the urine, um, red blood cells, which are indicators. Um, they have a Chem 7 done um, and some other, uh, see if they're anemic, uh, anemic also, hemoglobin, hematocrit. And then they have a brief consultation with a physician, nurse practitioner, somebody who will interpret what mm -hmm. was ready that day. And in six weeks they get, um, uh, mail to their home a whole uh, um, yeah. uh, a uh, review of what all those labs mean and everything. Also those labs can be sent to their primary physician if they're agreeable to that. They don't have to be. And then they're further referred to for education through the Kidney Foundation mm -hmm. and other facilities. Okay, thank you.